Hello there. In this video, I'm going to provide just a few tips uh, about using e-ink devices, whether it's a reader or a note taker or both, um, that I think you might find helpful. This is based on my experience. So just a few tidbits that I thought I'd throw out there uh, that might, you might find useful. So tip number one, this is regarding front lighting. Now, before we get into front lighting specifically, let me just say that e-ink in general is a pretty amazing technology. Um, it looks fantastic, but it has to look fantastic under certain conditions. So if you go outside, for example, um, it looks really good. Inside, it's a little bit dependent on your lighting. So the value of front lighting, of course, is to provide lighting where it's suboptimal. The thing is, is depending on how the front lighting is set, determines whether it either accentuates the e-ink experience or diminishes it. It's a very weird effect. So for example, usually putting front lighting onto full lighting you know, kind of diminishes it a little bit. It doesn't, it's not that it becomes less usable, it's just that there's something about it, you know, it kind of takes the edge off, if you will, uh, of what makes e-ink special. So the answer then is to actually kind of play with the front lighting settings, you know, move off of using full front lighting and playing a little bit with the temperature. And what you'll find is you can get a really nice level of front lighting that's perfectly functional without having to go all the way that also accentuates that e-ink experience. It's, I wish I could show it on the camera. It's really hard to explain, um, but it's worth taking just a little bit of time to get those front lighting settings right for whatever environment that you're in. So that's my first tip. You know, play with those front lighting settings because they can really make a difference. And I should point out that if you go halfway on the intensity of the front lighting, you're actually using less than half of the battery drain if you went all the way. So trying lower levels will actually have a lot of savings um, if you're used to using front lighting at its full power. So that's my first tip. My second tip is around the note taking aspect. And all devices have the ability to choose different pen styles um, and you can have different line lengths and what have you. And you really wanna take advantage of that. You know, unless you're doing something where you need the tilt sensitivity or the pressure sensitivity, you know, a pen like a ballpoint pen, which is a very consistent uh, line, is something you wanna take a look at because if you can get a consistent flow of ink from your pen, which these settings allow you to do, you don't have to put any pressure on the screen. Uh, and what that, that means is that you don't have to replace nibs. You know, I had the Note Air, the original Note Air from books about three years ago. I used it for a year as my daily driver before I went to the Super Note. And what I found is I never had to replace my nibs because I wasn't putting any pressure on the screen. Just enough to touch to write, but that was about it. Um, and it's a much more comfortable experience that way as well. So by so if you don't have the need to do any type of drawing or sketching, um, I would recommend going to the ballpoint pen, setting the line thickness to just the way you want it, and then it makes the writing experience easier and you save nibs in the long run. And oddly enough, those nibs kind of get a little expensive. Well, relatively speaking, anyway. The third tip I have is that, you know, I've used a lot of styli. I've done a number of videos on styli. I've got my styli cup here with all the styli that I've used um, over the years. And one of the things that I'm finding is that there's really two attributes of a stylus that I think really stick out and are kind of valuable. And other things are a little more uh, not as useful. So the first thing I would argue with a stylus is actually the thickness. The thicker the stylus, the more comfortable it is to grip for long periods of time. I think that's one of the things I like in addition to the looks um, of the heart of metal pens from Supernote is that they have a thicker shaft, which is easier to hold. You know, the thinner ones, you really have to grip a little tighter um, and it really does wear down my hands anyway. So that's one thing. I would look for the thickness of the stylus. The other thing I would look for is a eraser at the end. Now, many styluses that have an eraser feature will either do one at the end or have a button. And I really think one at the end is much better. Um, if you're writing and you're in a meeting and where flow and timing are important, um, you wanna be able to get to the eraser function fairly quickly. Uh, so using a button is a way to do that. But I tend to find that the button kind of gets in the way at times when it's not supposed to. It, it, you have to adjust your grip sometimes, you know, 
Uh, it's awkward to have the button there. It does depend on the stylus. Some do a better job of making it flush with the shaft than others. But generally speaking, um, I find it easier just to flip the stylus around. Let's see if I can, here we go. Just flip it around, erase, and flip it back is very convenient. And it's probably um, the best way uh, to use an eraser function if you're not using a super note. With a super note, you have the two finger eraser function. And it's kind of the same functionality as flipping it around and erasing. So that would be my recommendation. Look for a thicker stylus and look for one with an eraser at the end. I think that tends to be the most ergonomic choice and it holds up better um, over time. I do want to point out, having said that, uh, viewers of this channel will know that I was a huge advocate of the Kingwright stylus and, and I really do love its eraser feature. So its end eraser is the best that I've ever used because you don't have to put any pressure on it. You just touch the screen and go. So I still like it for that. But over time, I found both the thinness of that stylus as well as the button, which is a little bit raised, um, I found those to be not as useful features and kind of wish that I had a thicker King Wright with that end eraser function. Anyway, so those are my three tips for you. Number one is to uh, work on those front lighting settings because you can just accentuate the ink experience while saving battery. Number two is set the flow of the pen ink so you don't put pressure on the stylus, making them last longer and making you write more comfortably. And number three is when you're looking for a stylus, look for one that's thicker with an eraser at the end. I think those are the features, if you're like me, that you'll tend to find uh, make working with these devices a more pleasant experience. I'm gonna add to the list of these three tips, one bonus tip. So let's go back to that Note Air that I talked about. Now, I stopped using that device about two years ago and gave it to a coworker. And that coworker has still been using that same device uh, ever since. So that's three years uh, that that device has been in action and it's still holding up really well. So the reason why I'm mentioning that is that, you know, as a reviewer, I like seeing the new devices that come out. I think there's a lot of interesting things that are happening, but if I'm advising people, if you're thinking of buying an e-note taking device, you know, do your research, make sure that what you're getting is what you want, and know that yes, new things will come down the line that will have better features or better processors or what have you, but the device you have can last a long time if you want it to. These are not devices that last a year or two and you have to get rid of them. You can hold on to them for years, and if you take good care of them, uh, they're gonna keep going and still add the value and still be useful for you. So don't feel compelled to try to upgrade to the latest and greatest thing. Um, it's a nice to have, but it's not a necessity. These devices, even three years ago, are still really good for note taking and reading. And that is the core of what e-ink does the best. All right, I hope those tips were helpful or maybe at least a little entertaining to listen to, I don't know. Um, until next time, I will see you then.